Welcome back to Japan. Today we have a special game for you guys. It's been a little while, so I thought I'd record a little something something. I, but I don't know what game I have today. I brought in my friend. This is Gustav the Grandpa Bear. He's kind of grumpy, as his name might lead you to believe. He's mostly here because my plant isn't very big anymore. So I needed some color, I thought. Today's game is between Michael Redmond and Kajiwara Takeo. The date is 1983, February 11th. And this is a special game because white gives black Komi. So at this time in 1983, there were still sometimes handicaps given between professional players. And this is one of those times. The NHK is the National Broadcasting Association of the Government of Japan, and they do support Go very generously. At this time, Michael Redmond, who's world famous, I hope, for being the first Western person from the West to get a nine don professional nine don diploma from an Asian Go Association. In this case, the Nihon Kin, the Japanese Go Association. At this time, Michael is a two-don professional Go player, and his opponent is the legendary Kajiwara Takeo. And Kajiwara is famous for his innovative style of play and his search for truth on the board. It's also interesting to note that Michael Redmond is a contemporary Go player. He's still here. He's still around. He's a very popular teacher in Japan. And he is very active within the Japanese Go community and the Japanese Go Association. But at this time, he is being graced somewhat by the presence of a legendary Go player from the pre-war Japan and the post-war era as well, Kajiwara Takeo. So let's get into the game. Michael is black. Kajiwara is white. And with these first four moves, you can already see Michael is playing these rotating 3-4 points, which are the kind of representation, basically, of the Japanese, traditional Japanese style of Go. And it was popularized, of course, by Kuahara Shusaku, or Honimbo Shusaku. And it's interesting to note that Michael Redmond was a part of Go Seigen's Go Circle, the legendary Go Seigen. And Go Seigen learned and mastered Go when he was really young, nine, by mastering the complete games of Shusaku. So we're kind of seeing hereditary style being passed down here. And Kajiwara is, of course, this is 1983, so the Shin Fuseki or the new Fuseki has occurred. And so Kajiwara is playing a high style. And Michael approaches. The more traditional move would maybe be to enclose a corner to get a good pincer over here, but this is the modern era still, and so Michael is going to play a high approach. Kajiwara is also famous for his direction of play, and so he has a star stone here that's kind of radiating power out on the board, and he wants to use that, and so he's going to pincer. This is aggressive, and we're going to see in these next few moves, kind of a normal Joseki pattern play out. Uh, at this point, Black has several options. He can jump, he can play a high move, he can press on white like this. Michael is going to be pretty professional about this. He, remember, he is a two-down professional Go player. He's young. I think he's in his 20s, or maybe he is 20 at this time. So Michael plays this diagonal. It's a thick move, and it's also looking to press down white. And here is where we see Kajiwara's style come out. The normal move at this point would be something like a two-space jump here, or maybe if you want to play on the upper side, something here, or the AI says you should just play somewhere else. Yeah, no, yeah, Gustav, okay, okay, wow, geez. Yeah, Gustav says that the AI is recommending either approach a corner over here, Approach a corner over here. You could even be more aggressive and like play a direct contact. White, not only is he going second, he has to give five and a half points. It's be aggressive, says the AI. But Kajiwara's not going to do that. 
here is going to be the real start of the game. Already on move 12. Oh, what a move. This is Kajiwara searching for the truth on the go board. Is this a good move? Is this a bad move? What are you going to do? It's a challenge. And to Michael's credit, throughout this game, we will see he does not back down from any of Kajiwara's challenges. So Michael Hanes, which is the correct move. And now again, the move here would probably be to extend. This is what the AI recommends, and it's a good shape. Kajiwara doesn't do that. <laughs> he Hanes again, and it just seems like he is giving, giving, giving at this point to Michael. What can you do? This looks like a bad move. It should be a bad move. What do you do? Well, Michael plays correctly by wedging here in good shape with a tiger's mouth, we might add. And the AI says that the, maybe the best that Kajiwara could do would maybe be to connect. But at that point, like this is just so horrible that the AI says, of course, black, white would want to connect, but he can't. The AI agrees, this is white's only move. Black takes, and again, the AI thinks, this is the only move. And now, here is where black could go wrong. And this is why Kajiwada played this challenge. Lots of players maybe would think, I'll hane on the top, like this. Or I'll come back and make good eye shape, like this. Those are both wrong, bad moves. The only place to play is here. You have to connect. And the reason is, is if you look at the board, there's no co-threats anywhere for black. Black must connect this co. And now white has several cutting points, which of course he must defend. And this is why the AI thinks that this is not great for white. Kajiwara chooses here. Black cuts again. And now the AI recommends running, but Kajiwara doesn't do that. He sacrifices another stone, which Michael takes. And now this is a key move. It looks slow, but it's necessary. Right here, this move that juts out into the center of the board. And at the end of this first stage of the game, you can see that Kajiwara has made a wall facing his star stone, so he's happy about that. And Michael has some very powerful thickness in the center of the board. But this is the challenge that Kajiwara is offering to Michael. I've given you immense thickness. Can you use it? If I, as an amateur, look at this, I can't see how this thickness will necessarily come into play right now. I do recognize that this is powerful, but as a professional player, one of the, the, like the, the marks of a professional player is being able to use thickness like this very effectively. So that's the challenge that Kajiwara is offering to this young Michael Redmond. And Michael uses it right away by pushing down on white. Uh, white needs to live on the top. The AI had an interesting move, maybe a space away or even two spaces away that would force white to maybe make another move like here or into the corner or something. And then black could play somewhere else, maybe enclose a corner. Maybe something like, like this. But that's not really what we think of as human players when we were given thickness like this facing the top. We think press down. And now Kajiwara plays a very good Tetsuji that is worth remembering here. Of course, Michael could push down, but after here, he would have to pull back and white would connect anyway. So Michael chooses not to push down. So black could push down, but it's difficult to say if that would be the best thing for him. Instead, Michael Hane is on top. 
white pulls back. And this is better shape for white. And now black hanes again. Now oh, white is going to extend. Black also extends and white jumps. Black, of course, you don't play away, keeps the pressure on. White extends one more time. And then this is a move that the AI said was unnecessary. But as a human player, we think this move is an absolute must. And it looks beautiful. It's here. It's not a corner enclosure. That would be maybe a little too small right now. Michael looks to be kind of a, a like opening up a broad section of the board. Now we're going to see a little bit more of Kajiwara's style here. Oh, f he played it first. God damn it. I thought he cut at the end. Oh my God, guys. White is going to push. Black extends. And now we see a little bit more of Kajiwara's style coming out here. He cuts. Now he doesn't expect this stone to like lead to any big gains or anything, but it's a little bit of edgy put in there. It's just a little, just a little bit. And black, of course, has to capture it. And now white jumps and black pushes. White pushes again. And this move is great from the human perspective. This next move is so beautiful, but the AI said it's not really necessary. And it's this beautiful knight's move cap. It does, however, give White and Kajuara the chance to take Sente and play somewhere else on the board, which he does. So challenge number two, coming right up. Kajiwara approaches. Michael plays the Shusaku diagonal, still keeping in with this steady style. He probably didn't want to play the knight's move in fear of this pincer. That would work well with Kajiwara's corner over here. Hoping that this would put enough pressure on white maybe to have white jump. And so it must have been so vexing for Michael when Kajiwara was like, oh, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> he does it anyway, right? Even though Michael was like, I'm going to play this tighter move, putting more pressure on your stone, Kajiwara says, no, no, no. I have a star stone. I have a wall. I'm going to expand from that. And so it's, again, another challenge to Michael. This is probably not a great move. How do you refute it, Michael? And so the AI... Yeah? Okay, yeah, no. Yeah, that's, no, that's what I thought. Don't bully me. Oh, God. Yeah, the AI thought that it should be this pincer. However, there's an issue with this move, and I think the, the reason why Michael didn't play it is because white might jump here. And then even if Michael captures this stone, it's not dead yet. For example, if white played one more move here, this is the traditional way to finish off this area. And if you look at it, it's one, two, three moves for one, two moves. And white could even like come up here, right? And this huge area has opened up for white when before there was none. So this kind of exchange is possible, but probably not to black's advantage. And so Michael probably thought something like this, a trade like this wouldn't be so great. And that's probably what Kajiwara was looking to do when he played this move. So this is not how Michael is going to play, even though the AI suggested this move. Instead, and this might be the first part of the game where Michael might have lost his cool a little bit. Up until now, he's played very solid, not modestly, but steadily is the word. This next move is not bad right here. But the AI said, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. The AI said basically, this is too shallow. You can go all the way into this side. And in fact, yeah, no, I'm going to tell them. God, yes, yes, okay. In fact, for the, yes, 
for the past 15 moves, roughly. After all this up here, like we said, we said, you know, maybe he doesn't need this move. Maybe he doesn't need some of these moves, even though we think he does. Uh, the AI was saying, go in, go in, go in. And the AI this whole time, too, when White got Sente to play over here, was saying, defend, defend, defend. Like, this is White's nest egg. This is his everything. And so the AI is basically saying, if you can destroy this, it is assuredly your game. And so this isn't bad, but it could be better, is what the AI said. And we get kind of a classic reduction Joseki here on the side. And here again, the AI was saying, not here, no, here. It's a, it looks similar. It's a far away kind of defense. It's an indirect defense that's also an invasion. And that would have been the more modern thing to do. But of course, at this time, we're not expecting that. It's a traditional knight's move defense. And this is great shape. Michael has reduced this side, the potential in good shape. And the AI says again, white should defend his side. But Kajiwara does not do that. Kajiwara says, I have a nice little wall here. You have two stones. Guess what I'm going to do? Correct. He is going to ba -bum, dig out that side and attack those two stones. And so Michael just runs out in good shape. And we finish off this little section by Kajiwara jumping. And it's interesting to note at this time, who has all the territory? Well, if you look at the board right now, it's white. Black assuredly has some territory here on the, in the top in the middle. Maybe 10, 15 points at this point in the game. But if you look at who has the actual solid territory, White has solid territory on the side. White has a large moyo over here, and he's got a few points at the top. Black doesn't have any solid points of territory yet. And so Kajiwara is still challenging Black at this point. How are you going to make your territory? How are you going to make your points? And Black's next move is very interesting. Michael plays here. This is a great move as far as humans are considered. The AI, again, is still recommending this invasion. But again, from the human perspective, if we look at a white move here, oh, it looks so scary. Black just has this string bean group, and there's a cut between this knight's move. So this kind of a move looks dangerous for black. And even me, being a, a Fordon amateur player, I wouldn't want white to play here either. So this move is absolutely, I think, a necessity for a human player. And it puts a lot of pressure on White's four stones. So now we're going to see some very professional and profound play by Kajiwara. This is a good lesson to learn for an amateur player. When this kind of situation occurs, your first instinct is probably like, oh no, I need to make a base on the side. I'm going to push and then I'm gonna jump. And this is bad. Why? Because black might push you down here. Or black could even just invade the corner right away. This is worth maybe four or five points. And all you've done is help black improve his shape. This push is a bad move. Even this, if you didn't even play the push, if you just jumped, still a bad move. You're removing your whole potential over here to make territory. This is not a good way to play. So please pay attention to how Kajiwara handles these four stones so that he doesn't ruin his potential in the corner or on the left. So it's going to start with this move. Ooh, what is that? What is that? 
I'm not even sure that like <laughs> that that's a move I would ever even think of playing, but it's amazing and it works with the next move. And it's right here. So these two moves work in concert to take advantage of the thinness in Black's knight's moves. And by doing so, Kajiwara is making Aji that will help settle his group. Let's watch how he does that. All right, so at the end of this almost forced sequence, white is alive. And he didn't have to jump over onto the side and potentially ruin his corner profit. He did it by reducing black's center. And this is the most important thing. This cut on the right between these two stones is big money, right? If white gets to play here, later, it will be worth almost 10, 15 points. Huge corner territory. In exchange though, black has good thickness and he's going to use it to finally invade white's left side. Let's see how Michael gets around. Here is where the invasion stands a few moves later. And these last two moves that we just saw from Kajiwara, this 88 and 90, are very impressive. They look tiny, but the problem is, I have no idea why he played them. And when I reviewed this game with Vadim and we talked through it and, and what we should talk about and what we should say, these two moves really stood out as being the professional standard because neither one of us really understood why Kajiwara played them or really what they were for. I thought maybe they were for reducing eye space, but like black just jumps out and he's safe. Um, but the AI agrees that after you play 88, you have to follow with this move here. You must. If you find 88, then this is the move you must play. And I have to think it has something to do with reading out into the center that white wanted to make some kind of eye shape here on the side. And in any case, Michael's response to it and the fact that Kajiwara found them, I think is the real mark of what separates an amateur player from a professional. You maybe want to try and make half an eye on the side. This is a move that might appear to some people, but it's instructive to see how Michael played this move. This is Gote. Here is how Michael got there. He sacrifices a stone. He ruins White's eye shape. And now he gets this descent in Sente. White has to defend. And then Michael pokes just a little more to make this white group not quite alive yet. And now it's white who needs to be making some eyes.
So it's very interesting again, the professional touch. Michael, to defend this cut, attacks White's corner, removing the need to connect directly. This is another great lesson amateur players can learn. Another great lesson... No, no, yeah, I was, I was about to say it. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, God. Yes, God. Just settle down. This move, the Hane into the corner. This also looks like a good move, but it's not. Again, points to Kajiwara. This is the only move. The reason being, if you descend solidly like this, normally great shape, in this case, not so great. There's a jump left over. There's uh, the potential for a ko in the corner. This move leaves bad potential in the corner. This move removes that bad potential. And so it's another lesson us amateur players can learn. Not always, but often. A hane in the corner is your friend for making eye shape. Now the last little bit of the game we're going to look at is what's going to happen up here in the upper right. This is how Michael seals the game. But a quick note, this invasion by Michael, I think, is an indicator pointing in the direction of his mature style. It's very interesting. The AI and, and you know, this is perfectly fine, it says. There's nothing wrong with it enclosing the corner. But Michael has a YouTube channel and he has a Patreon. And I enjoy very much the videos that Michael Redman puts up on his YouTube, and they're very instructive. And he also comments on a lot of his games. And his style is an aggressive fighting one. It's something he, I think he said that he learned from Gosegan that fighting is the core of Go. If you're good at fighting, you're good at Go. To be good at Go, you have to be good at fighting. And so this could even be a case of Michael Redman kind of throwing the game back in Kajiwara's face and saying, all right, how do you like it? What are you going to do? Is it a bad move? Is it a good move? Well, what do you think, Kajiwara? What can you do in this case? Now, here is the key moment. This makes Black's group in the corner alive. But 
Michael Redman found an excellent move to sneak in right before he descends. And it's right here. Kajiwada prevents the connection underneath. Black lives in the corner. And Kajiwada would like to come back and pick up this excellent large corner that he's been just waiting on. But if he does, for example, here, black can cut here. And while white can take the stone, he's lost an eye. His group now only has one eye. This becomes, after he cuts, a false eye. And that's very dangerous because it's not clear how white's going to get another eye in the center or how he's going to connect up in the center. And so Kajiwara can't leave this upper side. He must defend here. And this gives Michael Redman the chance to come back and defend the cut. And when Michael gets this move, the game is all but over. And so where is the value in descending with this move instead? If we go back a little bit, if we imagine up till this point, everything was the same, except here, this move had been here. Now, Michael's special move doesn't work anymore. So that's why this descent was so important. Of course, the AI still thinks that the game would have been favorable for black, but at this point, it probably would have been something more like a one or two point game. The end result of this game is black wins by five and a half points. So at the end of the game, on the board it is even. With the Comey going to black, Michael Redmond wins by five and a half points. If Kajiwara had descended and Michael had still played the game perfectly, he probably still would have won by one or two points. So it would have still been a very close game. But there's a chance in this way that if, if um, White had been a little more active in the upper right here and seen this move and collected this large corner, that he could have upset the game and had a chance at winning in the end game. As it was though, he did not. He didn't see this move. He played here instead. And so at this point, when he descended and Michael lived and Kajiwara came back, that is all but game over. But we got to see some very, very high level play by a young Michael Redmond and it was, wow, what a game. <laughs> There's just so much in here that is educational, I think, to the Q-level player and even the Don-level players of the amateur ranks. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed this game. And thank you guys. This has been Go Magic. By the way, you can also watch these lessons on our platform, gomagic.org. Except there, you'll watch them with interactive quizzes right within the lessons and practical exercises right after them. And if you enjoy watching these Go videos and you don't want to miss others like this one, go smash that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and this is Go Magic.